Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I told you I'd be back. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, directed by Jonathan Mostow. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, after Terminator 2 Judgment Day, John Connor has been running. He's been running as the bombs have not dropped since his mother himself and the T-800, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, destroyed Cyberdyne and rid us of Skynet. But as we come to find out in this movie, it is inevitable and a TX has been sent back in time to kill John Connor's lieutenants and hopefully find him. But luckily they have sent back a warrior to protect John and as many people as they can. Ever since the huge success of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the studio wanted a sequel. Mm, yeah. And James Cameron was just like, nah, you know, Terminator 2 is is sealed. Mm. The story has been told. Yep. It has an ending, which means in order to create a sequel, you have to destroy Terminator 2. And as kind of Terminator fans, we kind of herald Terminator 2 as one of the greatest action films ever made. Mm, yeah. It's also one of the greatest sci-fi films ever made and is a pretty damn good sequel to a fantastic uh, horror science fiction film. Well, it's the film we, we fucking mark against all other sequels. You know, right. if it's nowhere as good as Terminator 2, it's not a good sequel. <laughs> And, uh, and the studios kept trying. They were like, James Cameron, give us the rights. Give us an idea. C come on, come and make it. Yeah. And he, he distanced himself for like 15 years. He was like, nope, not not doing it. Yeah. Um, but they uh, they kept asking Arnie. And they were like, Arnie, will you come back? And Arnie was like, I'm not doing it unless James Cameron's directing. Yeah. Until James Cameron said to Arnie, like, just do just it. Just do it, man. Just, just, but the thing is, just, just fleece them for as much money as you can possibly get. Well, it's as much as Arnie's story as it is James Cameron's. For me, it's Sarah Connor's story. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Arnie, obviously, Arnie is the, the face of, of the franchise, really, yeah. isn't it? You know? He is, yeah. And so he agreed to come back for $30 million. <laughs> to which, of course, he was paid and was treated to first class. Mm. Limousines everywhere, flights mm. everywhere, his own catering, you know. Yeah. He was looked after pay for his governorship of course they asked they asked edward furlong to come back and he agreed until a couple of weeks before they were about to shoot and it was like no nope, he's back in drug rehab yeah, clinics he, again he, he was on a lot of shit <laughs> they also asked linda hamilton to come back and she read the script and went fuck no like this is an abomination plus you kill my character off halfway through and she hardly has any dialogue right. like no you completely mishandling this character so no well work for alien 3 what well i mean you're killing off main characters and obviously you're trying to change the story much like alien 3 did you know and for a long time alien 3 was heralded as yeah the, but they didn't the... kill ripley halfway through the film no but they killed hicks and new and bishop right at the start and a lot of people said oh you you killed the family you ruined the franchise you know with terminator 3 coming along Killing off Sarah Connor might have given it a bit more oomph, you know, a bit more emotion to the story if she'd signed to it. No, it completely ruins the story for me. Like, she's the heart of Terminator 1 with Kyle Reese. Terminator 2, she's a badass. She carries that film. And dragging her back for a third movie would have, would have, oh, would have, <laughs> might not have worked, might have worked. We don't know. She said no, you know, and so she stepped away and came back for <clears throat> Dark Fate. But. <laughs> So they went through a long lineup of directors. You know, they asked Ridley Scott to come and direct it. <laughs> they asked uh, John McTiernan to come and direct it. No, it wouldn't have been too bad. And they all were like, nah, we ain't touching that because, uh, you know, we value our careers. <laughs> so they eventually got Jonathan Mostow, who had had some success with Breakdown mm. and uh, some unfortunately moderate success with U571. Yeah. Uh, this director really only proved with both of those films that he can uh, handle actors and action scenes very well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the company that had been behind Terminator 1 and 2 had gone into bankruptcy. And so the ownership for the Terminator franchise was all over the place. Somebody owned 50% here. Gail Ann Hurd owned another 50% there. And for me, yeah, Terminator 1 Terminator 2 is such a little perfect story that even at this time in 2003 when the announcement for Terminator 3 was coming out I was excited but at the same time a little bit annoyed because I was after the back of Alien 3 
You know, I'd been there in Alien 3 when that had come out and loved the first one, loved the second one, third one come out and everybody had fucking ripped it to shreds. You know, it was fucking shit. So when the third Terminator movie came out, I'm like, oh, I can see where this is fucking going. You know, it's not going to be as good as the sequel and it's hopefully going to be a continuation of the story or just milking a cash cow. Oh, it's totally milking a cash cow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally <laughs> milking a cash cow. But it was the start of milking a cash cow. We have literally gone down the fucking rabbit hole now where we are at the moment in the Terminator franchise. I knew there was... I had issues with this film before I even walked into the theatre to see it. <laughs> when the ticket was a PG movie. Oh, I was yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, Terminator's gone from an 18 rated to a 15 rated to a PG movie. Yeah, but I mean, with Terminator 2 being a 15, you know, I I kind of had a feeling that, like, we were dropping the violence aspect of the Terminators. But we have Nick Stahl, uh, Nick Stahl playing John Connor. I actually kind of got behind the whole idea of changing John Connor through the series. I kind of got behind the idea of maybe it's kind of like a James Bond thing. You know, one character should never just be John Connor because as, as, as much as I wanted Edward Furlong to come back, Edward Furlong ruined his career. He hit the drinks, he hit the drugs, he let it all go. And then when he was asked to come to this movie, he, he wasn't able to, he wasn't able to give the fans what the fans wanted, you know? So somebody else had to step in. And so Nick Stahl, I, you know, I saw him in, I saw him in Disturbing Behaviour, which I thought was a pretty good kind of step for school thing you know where yeah. the kids was the first the film i saw him in as yeah, well yeah I, I think he was in bully as well which i haven't seen but i've heard good things i really enjoyed him in the carnival hbo tv series yeah and he, he he's a he's a really good actor so when i saw him in this i'm like oh yeah you know what i can get behind this you know when you see him stand there i, I kind of like that sequence where you see him stand there with a the scar on his face and he's the old john connor in the future and i always love that aspect because if you remember Terminator 2, the guy at the beginning of Terminator 2, that's not Edward Furlong. You know, and there's no way that Edward Furlong grows up to be that guy. But that is your John Connor. you got the scar down the eye, oldish hair, and the brutal look on his face that he's gone through some fucking shit. As, as Nick Stoll, John Connor, starts to narrate to us at the beginning of the movie, you know, the bombs didn't drop in 97. Judgment Day didn't happen. And so, my problem really with the Terminator franchise has always been the fact of how how can you kill Skynet without killing John Connor? You can't. It's a paradox. John Connor has to exist as always as Skynet has to exist. And so with Nick Stoll, John Connor running around on his bike, he's inevitably always running from this future that is just on the edge of happening at some point. But as hard as I try, I can't erase my dreams, my nightmares. And I, I do, I've always loved that sequence where he's kind of sat on the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And he's drinking the beer. He's you supposed know. to have been uh, contemplating suicide at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it's always, it, it, that's what I like about Nick Stoll's character. He, he's kind of a run down. John Connor. Yeah. You yeah, know, he's yeah. not the happy resistance fighter waiting for his hero moment. He's actually thinking, what the fuck am I doing with my life? You know, if I'm not the big leader... It's a non-life. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not the big leader of the human resistance, what am I supposed to do? Maybe I should just kill myself. You know, but... Time powder up's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, dropping the beer in the in the water and then you just see all the skulls. You know, and then you see the you see the the flyers coming around, the new kind of HKs, which for me at the start, the first time seeing it, and this time I'm like, ah, they are trying to sway away from the first and second movie just a little bit by giving us these new things, you know, these new flying machines, and then we just get a shitload of T800s just walking with guns. Oh yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's all your trailer bait. That's all you needed to get bums in seats. Yeah, yeah, it worked. I, it's, it, it's not as good as the intro to Terminator. Fuck, it's not even close. It's not even close. That's all you get in this movie. But it's it's their <laughs> little hey, you know, look look what we've got. We've got special effects, and you're like, what else have you got? We got Arnie. That's what we paid for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thirty million on Arnie. <laughs> and yeah, you know, and we get Arnie's appearance. We see him teleport in. And he ends up going into a into a a, 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 a country and western bar. 
See, I always thought it was, I always kind of thought it was a gay bar because of the guy on stage. But it's not, it's a country and western bar yeah. with a ladies' night going on. And this guy on stage who probably isn't sexually attracted to any of the ladies, as you can tell by the way he talks, is a stripper. And Arnie is looking for clothes. And of course, it's a match. Take off your clothes. Patience, Arnie. Yeah. But then you get the comedy moment where the stripper tells him to talk to the hand and Arnie talks to his hand. Just, yeah. Because he's Terminator and he's, he's stupid. He's, a, he's from the future. He doesn't know anything. Well, he's, he's, a learn, <laughs> no, he's a learning machine. This is something I picked up with him in this one. He is, he's learning. And he's, in a way, remembering. Because after he gets dressed... And he steps outside and you have that Elton John glasses moment, which is quite possibly the worst moment in a Terminator franchise next to the storyline to Terminator Genesis. I agree with that. Mm. And then he gets into his van after crushing the glasses and you see him about to, you know, he's about to hotwire the car, but he pulls down that little flap, you know, and immediately all I heard was John Connor go, are we learning yet? Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like this Terminator, no one's taught him how to do that. No, he yeah, well, he just did it. He's a T850, not a T800. He's a different model to the one that we know in Terminator 2. But he's also slightly supposed to be, uh, you know, emotionally attached or having an emotional connection to John Connor. But we also have uh, Christina Loken uh, playing the Terminatrix or the TX or the T10,000 or whatever. TX. Yeah, yeah, whatever the <laughs> fuck you want to call it. The anti-Terminator Terminator. And she's been sent back and just hits Hollywood Boulevard. And I I wasn't sure at first. First time I'm watching it of a female Terminator. I'm not being discriminative or anything. You know, I like it. I, I, I think it's a great idea. But the first time I watched it, I was like, how's this going to work? you know like really and the film kind of allows me to understand this a little bit more by after the TX has killed her first person and stolen her outfit and stolen her car she gets pulled over by a car I'm just like okay so you, you murder someone the minute you get here okay it's what Terminators do yeah, yeah, but yeah. then you get in the car and you start speeding and I'm like, are you just trying to draw attention to yourself? Did you just need a police officer so you could get his gun? <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 I put it down to the Terminator being systematic. I, I go back to the first one, you know, when they when they ask Kyle why the Terminator has killed like five people named Sarah Connor, yeah. and it's well, it's just being systematic. You know, he's he he's. It's just doing what it does. It can't be stopped. It can't be reasoned with. So when she's speeding, it's just because she doesn't she doesn't give a fuck. You know, and yeah, she gets pulled over by a cop. But she sees a sign. And this is a Terminator that can kill people with its fucking hands. And just fucking... Yeah, it's a fucking killing machine. It needs big boobs. What the <laughs> fuck for? I like it. But what the <laughs> fuck for? <laughs> I like your gun. What? <laughs> Those are deadly weapons, dude. No, fucking hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, why don't she just fucking walk around the movie naked? Everybody would be distracted. She could kill fucking everything. But well, I think we already said this in Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, the stupidity of Skynet. Right. You know, Sky, it's, I put that down to not the writers or the directors or the fucking actors. You know, I put it down to Skynet, you know, an imaginary computer in the future that doesn't actually think properly. I love the fact that she can speak modem. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she speaks dial up. Yeah. <laughs> and but that's where she gets all the information to target all of the uh, the colonels and lieutenants of the resistance to John Connor. Yeah, yeah. I... And goes and systematically starts hunting them down. She goes to the drive through Yeah. Blasts him away. Yeah. She turns up at the teenager's house. It's yeah. having a party. Yeah. Blasts him away. And Blast I'm like, him away. they're killing kids. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you don't expect it really in a horror movie like that. But well, I, like, I like that one. And she gets to that kid's house and she's like, are you Edward and Lisa Evans? And he's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fucking so-and-so and my sister's up the stairs. And she's like, oh, and she just whacks him to the floor. 
pulls out a gun, shoots him, and then has to shoot him like seven more times because just in case she missed the headshot. She's making sure. <laughs> Oh, the fucking burger guy! She nailed in two shots. It was a headshot. <laughs> yeah, like she's like, bang, ba 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 bang, ba 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 ba, blam. What you also didn't see was her finger paint a message in blood afterwards to the parents. <laughs> Sorry, I killed your kid. You know, I I always found that this story, this this part of the storyline, I, I I always had arguments with people about how this timeline worked. You know. Like, Skynet has sent the TX back in time to kill lieutenants. Because it doesn't know where John is because he went off the grid. Because he went off the grid. But it's like with the lieutenants, you know, it's gone back. The TX has been sent in time, sent back in time to kill the lieutenants. So you, you kind of figure that these lieutenants, like the burger guy, is in the future. So killing him in the past stops him from being in the future. That makes sense. But... I used to have this argument with people saying, they said, well, it completely changes the timeline then once they've killed the lieutenant. You know, it completely changes everything. And so everything in the past that the TX has done would probably not exist. And then obviously the whole film is completely convoluted. And it's like, well, yes, but what's to say that somebody just didn't take the lieutenant's place two seconds after she yeah. killed it? Right. It's time travel. <laughs> you know, I try to my best to fucking understand it. And I literally have to kind of pull my brain out, wring it out every now and again and put it back in and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Claire Danes uh, is playing Kate Brewster in this movie. I kind of like Claire Danes. Yeah, Claire Danes know? is amazing. She's a very talented actress. Very, she's very pretty very as well. Very pretty as well. I, I, I mean, I first saw her in, uh, I think it was My So Called Life when I was in my teenage years. And obviously, uh, she did Romeo and Juliet of with course. Leonardo DiCaprio. And she's got a fucking whole host of other films. But she's finding stuff with her boyfriend in the store because they're going to get married and she gets a phone call from her father. Kate Brewster's father is in charge of a, a, a scientific division, a uh, tech division that is in charge of all the military in America and have control of all of their networks and they understand obviously the air traffic controlling and the mobiles and the, the TVs. They, this guy, this general is fucking in charge of everything. But there's a virus running around at the moment, infiltrating every single system. And it's bypassing all the firewalls. And it's infecting pretty much everything. That is Skynet. That's <laughs> Skynet. This was the first film that actually brought out software and hardware for me. Because I never really, I don't, you know me, I don't fucking understand computers. <laughs> I don't know how fucking shit works. I hit it on, it works. If it don't, it's some, i got to plug it in. Um, and I always imagine Skynet as a giant supercomputer, especially in the future. You know, you've seen so many, you know, images and games of this big machine that Skynet had become, you know. And so I always imagined he was a giant computer. But this film was like, well, no, no, Skynet's not just in one thing. He's in everything. So John crashes his bike um, and has to go to a veterinarian's to find bandages and medicine because obviously he doesn't want to go to a hospital or get put onto a network um, and it's at this time that we realize that Kate is the vet coincidence <laughs> and uh, she ends up going to the her, her her vet place and finds John there and he kind of threatens her with a gun to say look you can't call the police on me and she, she kind of stuns him with that ball, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. She tricks him and yeah. then grabs, grabs the gun and shoots him. She like, <laughs> kills John Connor. Oh, shit. End of movie. <laughs> right, it's a good job you brought a paint gun there. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you would have been dead. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she ends up throwing him into a cage. Yeah, yeah. In the back of the <laughs> she store. locked him in there because she's like, I need to go and deal with this cat lady. I kind of like that cat lady. She's like, where's the other doctor? It's half past five in the morning. I shouldn't even fucking be here. <laughs> I hate people like that. <laughs> yeah. He's got a he's got a hairball. It's like fucking. And then I suppose you were happy when you saw her die, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's not long before the Terminatrix turns up. Yeah, and uh, she just like starts blasting people, she, automatically assuming that it's Kate Brewster. Yeah, she's got a DNA scanner in her tongue. <laughs> right. I was like, but how does Skynet? Ha like, okay, whatever. Skynet's got the DNA of these people in the future and programs it into their Terminators so that they can. Confirm their terminated kills, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, man. I know. Let's let's try not to overthink this movie. It doesn't it doesn't need visual kind of. <laughs> but I I kind of but that was their way of linking up to the next part because the Terminatrix goes into the back of the uh, back of the vets to find Kate and finds a bandage on the floor, and she analyzes it, and realizes it's her primary target, John Connor, and kind of overloads on excitement. Yeah. <laughs> didn't know Terminators could do that. I didn't know. So maybe she's had her emotion chip turned on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, Christina Loken's face making this oh, look. It was pretty satisfying, actually. <laughs> but it gives Kate a chance to escape. She gets inside her van and the Terminatrix comes up. I hate that punch through the glass. It's ah. a shit shot. I mean... <laughs> Some bad visual effects. That could have film. been 15 million there, Arnie. Thank you very much. <laughs> could have at least worked on that. No, the the worst thing is what's coming next. All oh, right, go on. Is after she's kind of thrown out of the truck. Yeah. The Terminator turns up in his own truck. Yeah. yeah. Bounces off the ground and manages to crash right into the Terminatrix, whilst Kate Brewster is lying on the ground. Oh yeah, but he bounces over her. Didn't you notice that? Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but he literally boom bounces that was, over. That was fucking lucky, wasn't it, Terminator? Did you calculate that in a nanosecond? He's <laughs> It's a Terminator. He knows everything. I don't care what he knows. That is so <laughs> bullshit. I'm ripped right out of the film from that moment. Like, no. Man. Can't buy it. I don't believe it for a second. Yeah, but time travel, dude. If he killed her there, the whole fucking thing would have gone up in smoke. And exactly. It's like, won. what a risk to take. <laughs> but, but, it's a, yeah, but it's a Terminator. He doesn't He doesn't work on risk. Probably, you know, it's like, it's like the Terminator's always said, there's an 89% he's going to kill her. It doesn't work on probabilities. That's a probability. Well, I've not been Terminator, have you? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, let's, let's try not to look too much into it. He crashes into the Terminatrix, smashes her into a wall, which completely stuns her. And he, he comes across Kate Brewster and, and throws her in the back of her truck to kidnap her, I suppose, and asks for John Connor's information. So he knew at this point that Kate and John were going to be at this location, luckily. Um, and as he goes into the back to rescue John, John breaks out from his cage as the TX is getting up. And this is the first realization for us that this is a a new type of Terminator because it's it's got a its skeletal hand is nowhere near as good looking, I suppose, as the T eight hundred. It doesn't look as bony. No, it actually looks like a, a cyborg, a proper machine and then you start to watch the liquid metal start to run up its arm and then the liquid metal starts to take on the coloration colorization of skin yeah and so it's at this point i'm like all right so it's a mixture of the terminator and the t1000 all right okay let's 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 try something new here it's new but it's inferior to a t1000 <laughs> isn't it is it? Yeah. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah, it's definitely a downgrade. The T-1000 could not construct weapons. Well, stabbing knives, which was all it needed, it killed people with them. The fact that the T-1000 <laughs> could also break itself down completely into liquid form and get through the tiniest gaps, whereas the TX can't do that. No, she, well, she doesn't need to. She's, a, she, she's like I said, she's much like the, 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 the T-800. Yeah. She'll oh, just no, it's walk a downgrade. through a wall. <laughs> well, I mean, she fucking she got plasma cannon for an arm. That's not a downgrade. She, the Terminator turns around with his shotgun and is like, boom, boom. And the TX, TX pulls up her arm and changes it into this fucking thing and just blows Arnie through the wall. And you're like, ah, oh, right, okay. Just like the T-1000 then, you know, Arnie is the inferior model. You know, he's 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 going to get beaten up every fucking chance that he ever confronts. Us. He's going to face it every time because he's got no fear. But he's just taken a hit through a wall and he's completely stunned now. John and Kate are racing down the street in their veterinarian van and the TX, like, like I said, I don't fully understand how shit works, um, but I didn't really understand that all it took to run a car was the electrical equipment. Yeah, this is total bullshit. I, I, like I, I know really the hate this. Like I know, well, I know, I, I drive and I know that you have to turn the engine on. You know, but I, I and and that kind of works. But I don't understand how a, a a remote controlled car infected with nanites from a TX could work pedals and a gear. 
It's the fact that you see it create circuitry with inside the car. No, well, no, this, I, t- I thought that circuitry was there. It just kind of took it over. In all, all of those vehicles? You, you, I don't you, think so. You, I, I don't, None of those I, cars are self-driving cars. Dude, I, I, <laughs> dude, I want to say I don't think so, but I watched... Two fucking police cars and a fucking ambulance and a fire truck raced down the street after John Connor. And I tried to think about how that would work. And I'm like, it's an action scene. I really just supposed to just turn my brain off. Because it's what the writers wanted to have happen with no explanation really as to why it happened. Well, we were saying this before, uh, before we actually hit the camera on. There are a lot of references or homages or just complete rip-offs of... T2 in this movie and for me this was one of those sequences you know this is this is T3's version of the truck chase sequence from T2 it's not as good but it's a hell of a lot destructive you know they're like right okay let's 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 give the TX a crane you know the T1000 and T2 had a truck how do we get bigger we give it a crane and we just let it smash the fuck out of a street yeah this is this is the saving grace of the film this action sequence in the extended action sequences in the film are really good Mm -hmm. when the cgi is not kind of as obvious Mm. you know at the time of release this action scene blew my socks off yeah it was really impressive to look at yeah you know it's a five plus minute sequence of just Cars colliding, oh. buildings exploding, the I, crane just smashing through things. I love it when she, when Arnie's on the crane hook and she just extends the arm and just drives Drags him, him through, through a building. building. You're like, yeah. <laughs> now, some of the bits, you're just like, it's obvious fakery now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. the only thing, I mean, I loved all the sound effects, but the biggest thing missing from this sequence was any music at all. Yeah. It was only when I, I realised, I was like, there's no music there's, there's no music in this action sequence. It like only towards the end of the sequence does the music kick in, and then again, I don't actually recall the music for the rest of the film. I was like, this film did away with the iconic music score of Terminator One and Two. Yeah, yeah. I, I like I looking at that sequence. There was a lot of smashing, a lot of crashing, a lot of sirens, a lot of noise going on. So trying to stick a soundtrack over the top of it, I think, would have really, really ruined it. Unlike the sequence from T2, in the sequence in T2, you've just got Arnie on his bike, T1000 in the truck, minimal, you know, revving of engines, couple of shotguns blast, and the music is there pumping, keeping you going. I was watching this sequence, you know, and you know, like you, I, I didn't even notice the, the there was no music, but it was because I was like, I was listening for every smash of glass and every crash crash of the car you know i was i was actually hoping to hear see something crash with no sound to actually write it down and go well they fucking missed that bit little bastards but it's like when he drops the it, well not even when he drops the crane into sewer like like the bit where he hits the front of the fire truck you know and it's just like donk and i'm like ah, they're, they're still trying the comedy elements you know you, you, i don't i don't need a funny fucking terminator but arnie gets aboard the crane um and throws the TX out. I, I mean, it's shitty CGI, but I do like the way that she kind of hooks onto the truck and starts pulling herself through. And he he drops a crane into the sewers as he leaps out the front of the truck so that he can escape from the TX. And uh, I like this, but The Dark Knight did it a hell of a lot better. The Dark Knight did it for real. I know, I know. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that, but they just did it better because... I mean, you watch that crane, like we said, like at the time, they weren't really going to be able to afford to flip a fucking crane over and make it look all destructive. Um, but, I mean, it's cool. The idea of it is, but today, looking at that effect, and I'm just like, that's all it is. It's just an effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kind of like the... It's just a Sorry. big anticlimax, really, from a great you know chase sequence, just to have it end... In a, in a dud like that, really. Well, no, because much like the other films, you know, the, 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 the evil Terminator has been stopped and now it gives the heroes that chance to get away. You know, yeah, it, like, like, like i got to say this now. Like, if every time, you know, we look at T3, we fully compare it to Terminator 2 or even Terminator 1, you know, we might as well just burn every fucking copy of this movie ever because those two are perfect. You know, we... This is just a kind of continuation of the story. Not a good one, but a continuation. And so when they're driving along in the desert, 
you know, and we get our little talking points now between them. I'm like, okay, this is where T3 is able to stand on its own ground, you know, because now we need to kind of understand how the shit works. We were, we, we, from where we stood, everything had been destroyed. Nothing should exist. You should not be coming back. And Nick Stahl, and I like the way that the Nick Stahl, John Connor, the scriptwriters actually put all this in like, right, okay, we need to fucking explain to the audience how this all works. But we stopped Judgment Day. You only postponed it. Judgment Day is inevitable. You can't stop it. Or, well, the film writers don't want to stop it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly The film it. companies don't want to stop yeah. it. And, 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 I, and it just completely just goes to Terminator 2. It's like, fuck you. Like, your whole thing about destiny and no fate but what you make for yourselves, it's, it's inevitable it, because, because it is. John Connor can't exist without Skynet. Skynet has to exist for John Connor to exist. If there is no Skynet in the future, there is no Carl Reese to send back. And if there's no Carl Reese to send back, there's no John you, Connor. Every time he gets sent back, he creates an alternate timeline. Right, you say alternative timeline. Yeah, like, it already is because it's now a timeline. Where right, and we John are Connery. in that timeline. It's our timeline. Yeah, which is different it, from the future one. It exists. And so we're... It's already changed. We're in, <laughs> and we're in it. We knew this when we paid for the DVDs. We knew this when we were paying our tickets. That we were walking into a film where we would have to understand how this time travel works. Judgment Day is inevitable. The story is basically T Judgment Day is inevitable and they were gonna send they were they couldn't find John, so Skynet has been sending Terminators back to systematically kill his his lieutenants. And does this hook into Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles? You know, because I know that there was no. a TV series where yeah. many Terminators were being sent back to many other different alternative story points. It's so, like almost eight years, I think, after this film. And it, that Terminator series ignores Terminator 3 because Terminator 3 is horrible in, in terms of con the continuation. But... but but what I'm but what I'm saying is is that I always see Skynet as always in the future, always trying to send back a new machine every five minutes, you know, to go back and kill their grandparents, go back and kill their dog, go back and kill that neighbor that almost sexually molested fucking John at a young age. But doesn't there's a lot of fucking shit that Skynet's always trying to do and inevitably always fails and John Connor always exists. And so when he sat there in the truck, I I, I mean I kind of like the cool Bit where he pulls out the power core and he's like look got a fusion power core <laughs> this will come in handy at some point in the movie and he lobs it out the window <laughs> just glad that the previous terminators didn't have those well they were <laughs> never gonna get damaged by them well he got he got he's got damaged because he got hit by a plasma fucking weapon yeah carl reese was never gonna damage the endoskeleton in terminator one and get to his power core the T-1000 may have. You know, he should have really just fucking stabbed them right in the gut and went... What I'm saying is that when the T-1000, you know, the T-800 goes into the molten steel, you know, it's just not going to explode. You know, it's not going to get ruptured and... <laughs> well, no, because because James Cameron didn't actually invent... No, no, they, <laughs> they didn't have them back then. <laughs> but this is the T-850, so we can be different. Yeah, 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 yeah this is the T-850. And, and he, he, he lobs it. Out, out the window and you watch that little mushroom cloud and I'm like, oh, fucking <laughs> hell, Jesus, okay. But we see the TX then go to Kate Brewster's apartment and kill her boyfriend and assume his form. Um, and the two police officers turn up and, and inform us that the Terminator and Kate have been spotted at a gas station and they're possibly heading to a certain location. And at the gas station sequence, you know, John and Kate start to get to know each other. And Kate recognised John in the vets. She recognised him from her childhood about how they'd made out in a basement uh, when they used to go to school with each other. And the day after that is when he hooked up with the T-800 and went off on his little spree. You know, the Terminator has been sent back in time to rescue Kate and rescue John. But from the first time of watching it, hearing this, the, the, the dialogue from the T-800, there's this little, the, the, you know, there's little things that you notice where Kate will say stuff and the Terminator will acknowledge it. 
but John will say stuff and the Terminator just kind of just ignores him. You know, it's like when she says to him, she tells the Terminator to drop dead. Drop dead, you asshole. I'm unable to comply. And he's like, I can't do that. Like he was, he in his mind, from a computer's perspective, he would try, but he can't. Yeah. <laughs> but again, that just, again, the writers just fucking drop the ball with this. Because you find out that, yeah, John Connor didn't send this Terminator back. Kate Brewster did. And yeah. Kate Brewster programmed the Terminator to accept all of her orders. Yeah. Yet you cut to the beginning of the film where she's ordering the Terminator to put her down. She's ordering the Terminator to let her out the truck. And he just ignores her. But he can't. He's got a rescuer. So there's a TX right there. It's you know? In the but film, the Terminator it's... only responds to Kate Brewster after we find out that Kate Brewster's the one that sent it back. From there forward, Terminator does whatever she asks. It's just like, well, it's lazy writing. Yeah, well, it's it's all in connection because John realises that her dad is the head of the division and that if he hadn't run off with the Terminator in T2, he would have hooked up with Kate and would have found out about her dad and would have found out about Skynet and it was all her dad's thing. It was never Miles Dyson. And, and, and it's the acceptance. This is the thing that people have to accept that if you want this franchise to continue... And we did. They had to make some fucking calls. They had to make some calls in the storyline to keep going. Or they could have just ended it in 1997 with fucking Terminator 2 and we would not have anything now. We'd have two films. That's it. You only postponed it. Judgment Day is inevitable. But it's... It, it was... It's us leaving our, 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 our kind of emotions at the door, you know, when we sit down to watch this film. It was never going to be good. It's like this cemetery sequence that's coming up. You know, we, we wanted Sarah Connor. But then when they get to the cemetery and the three of them walk in, we start to find out that Sarah Connor, in this storyline, in this timeline, whichever way you want to look at it, she had been diagnosed with leukemia after Terminator 2, had fought on for three years to make sure that John was safe and that Skynet hadn't dropped the bombs, and then she died. And we're looking at her coffin here but when the coffin is open it's full of guns and we are told that actually she died she she died in mexico she was cremated and her ashes were scattered to the wind and john had left on the day that she died so i kind of feel the same fucking feelings that i felt in other movies that have done this where i'm like you've killed the family off and i feel really fucking sad about it but i kind of like nick stall's nick stall's delivery of the emotion that John's feeling. You know, like we said, he'd been suicidal at the start. He'd felt like his life was going nowhere. You know, his mother had built him up to be this great hero, and here he was, sitting around doing fuck all with it. And to know that he'd been there with Sarah all the way up until the time that she died, knowing that Linda Hamilton hadn't come back, I would have liked to have seen those sequences. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're just sat in the bed you know, or in a hospital looking ill, but at least it would have given us some emotional attachment to a lot of the characters in this film that we don't actually get. Yeah, I just wouldn't have, no, I'd, <laughs> I would have hated it even more if she was well, in well, this. Yeah, but, but would you, but would you have, you, yeah. you, you don't know, the writers may have actually, you may have hated it if James Cameron had come back and actually tried to write it, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons to hate this film, but there's a lot of reasons to not, like this sequence, I love this sequence. I was writing favorite scene after favorite scene with this fucking with this sequence because it, it was, action scene. Well, no, it was <laughs> it was a poor version of the Cyberdyne system um, attack. You know, with all the cops outside and yeah. Arnie's there with the big gun. But it was the dialogue, like like I really liked the part where John's like, "Leave me, you don't need me. I'm a fucking waste." And the Terminator grabs him and goes to choke him. And John turns around, he's like, you fucking machine, fuck you. And Arnie's like, yeah, anger's a lot better than fucking negative approach. And I'm like, well, yeah, no, psychological. Yeah, he's, he's, he needs to keep John he's alive. He's kind of lost the, the fatherly approach in this <laughs> film and is yeah. now more like the drill instructor. But Kate escapes from, uh, from Arnie and, and John and she runs out into the arms of the cops and the Terminator throws... John into the coffin and walks out with his big ass machine gun. But before he actually makes his approach, we, we see the doctor from Terminator 1 and 2. Dr. Silberman. I fucking love this bit. He's just sitting there like, that actor's brilliant. 
He's just sat. I was really happy when I saw him turn up because it's just the way he's just like, oh yeah, I've been there, you know, yeah, back in '93, fucking drain syringe in my fucking neck, you know. I started imagining things, crazy things, <laughs> terrible things, things that are just, and you just really know that he's reliving that night in his head. Yeah, you know, he's watching the T1000 walk through, but you'd never like T2 had never fully established. Like, his character's mental approach after the events of T1. Like, like he left the police station right. two fucking <laughs> seconds after that Terminator walked in. So, for me, like, if that was me, I'd woken up the next day and looked at a police station that had been shot up. I'd be like, holy fucking shit. Like, I, would, I was literally, like, like, there. Like, I was there. But And I start to garner that from this, this version of the character. You know, where he sat there like, look, fucking... Shit happens and you don't know how to explain it. And then when he turns around and he sees Arnie again, you know, <laughs> the Terminator again, he's, he's gone. <laughs> he's fucking gone. He's like, I'm out of this movie. Fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Of all cameos in films, that is one of my favorites. Yeah. It's yeah, done really yeah, well. Yeah. 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 You know, everything around it was shit, but that bit was good. Yeah. And yeah, and the whole visual of Arnie walking around with a minigun under his arm. Yeah. It's just, yeah, that, that was great. You know, he blows up cop cars, cops go running, and yeah. even though he's been told not to kill anyone, yeah. he just doesn't kill anyone. Destroy as many cars as you want, <laughs> but don't kill anybody. And, uh, and they get into a hearse, a TX turns up, and they bazooka her ass. Uh, <laughs> I really like it when she kills that cop. <laughs> like, like, I really like, like she, he's like... Where is she? And he's like, oh, we'll take you back to the PlayStation. And all of a sudden, this fucking fist goes right through his chest and grabs the wheel. And now I always, I always wondered how the fuck she drove the car from the back. But after seeing a T-1000 and Terminator 2 fly a helicopter with three arms and know that this bitch has got liquid metal as well, she just made long feet. Right. And just fucking worked the paddles with little flaps. You know? But... I watched this movie with my wife um, for the review and my wife turned to me and she's just like, that bit was fucking stupid. And I was just like, whoa, what bit? And it's like you said, it's when they shoot the Terminator with the rocket launcher. She's yeah. like, she had ample fucking chance to kill Kate yeah. and yet she had to slowly transform back right in into her original her. form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They jump in their hearse and they start to escape. And uh, it was something that did... That was one of the things that pissed me off with the film, especially um, for fourth or fifth time of fucking watching it, is there's far too many chase sequences in this movie. Um, I, I can't ever see that as a criticism in a Terminator film because no. Terminator 1 and 2 are just feature-length <laughs> chase movies. Yes, but like we've been saying for how long we've been fucking ta talking, Terminator 1 and 2 do it fucking brilliantly. You know, yeah. the chase sequence with the bike at the end, T1, you know, and the truck is fucking great. The chase sequences in T2 are fucking great. This one, I just felt that they were trying to imitate all that again. Oh, yeah. You that know, is and my complaint. Yeah, okay. and I'm just like, I I, I, I like them, but this is too... Because this is now another fucking... Them in a car being chased by the TX. The TX is jumping, and I'm like, well, I know for a fact that, you know, because this sequence happens a lot... You're just going to get rid of her. And what happens? Arnie rams her into a fucking truck and knocks her off the back. And then we get Arnie's little one-liner of, I think we need a new vehicle. I'm like, oh, okay, comedy elements again. And so they pull up by a, what's it, a Winnebago and they get a chance to chill out and have another catch-up. Oh, yeah. That whole John Connor's like, I'm going to blow my brains out unless you do what you what I want you to do. Yeah, because I'm, I'm the leader of the resistance and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, nope, I take orders from her. I killed <laughs> you in the future, so she reprogrammed me and I take orders from her. And, and Kate's just like, well, okay, I want you to go rescue my father. Because in, the, in this movie, Judgment Day is today. Like fucking, like Sky, like, like this is one of the things the film has been implementing right from the start. Skynet has infected all of the fucking systems around America. You know, they've lost communication with all of their subs, all of their satellites. The phones are down, the TVs are down, everything is fucked up. But they don't know it's Skynet. But what they do know is if they turn Skynet on, Skynet's going to find this virus and kill it. 
But the general, and I do like this about the general, that the general is reluctant to do it. Yeah. Because he wants a human mind in control of all of this stuff. And he, it's like he said, look, if we turn Skynet on, it's like shooting a, 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 a bug with a bazooka. And I'm like, well, yeah, isn't there a way that you could just minimize Skynet? <laughs> you know, just have him in control of a couple of things, you know, and then work your way up. But they're working through the theory that they could be under attack right now and they would never know. You know, so the moment where we are literally building up to the moment that they, where they switch it on and Skynet's going to go, fuck you all! <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray to God this works. Skynet defense system now activated. Power failure? We get this little now talking point as they're driving along where Kate starts to speak to the Terminator. I suppose, you know, she starts to starts to question him about obviously stuff in the future, about what he's done. And this is where obviously we find out that this Terminator is obviously a completely different model to the other one. It was assigned by Skynet to infiltrate uh, the future resistance and kill John Connor because of his emotional attachment to the machine. Only one fucking problem with that, bitches. We were told in the first fucking movie that killing John Connor at that point will make no fucking difference. Right. None. None whatso fucking ever. Other than the fact that you've just given the human resistance a T-815 fucking model that they can immediately send back through a time machine, which I don't even know where the fuck they got it, you know, at the same point that the TX actually is there. So that was fucking lucky. And they turn up at the installation where... Um, Kate's father is working and the, TA, the TX has already infiltrated this place to find the general and you know we see all the little toys that they have they've got the flying HKs that we saw at the beginning and they've got these big robot kind T1s. of T1 <laughs> HK fucking looking motherfuckers there you know which are mini versions of the ones that we've seen in T1 and T2 and she comes along with her big finger and infects them with nanites to be able to take control of them but she also assumes the form of Kate to get close to her father just as the Terminator turns up and he blasts the fuck out of the TX with an AK and a grenade launcher and blasts her down an elevator shaft and we get possibly the worst or was it worse in Salvation or Genesis? This is, this is worse. This, this is awful. Like... This this is a top secure facility. Yeah, and they just yeah. fucking walk in. And they just place. walk, they walk right, right into in. the command center like, of it. Like Kate must have walked up to the receptionist and gone, "Hi, I'm here to meet my dad." Like and these friends are with me. Yeah, yeah, Kate, go on out. You know where his office is. Right? Take yeah. your friends with you. See you, Kate. What's that? Is that an AK-47? Oh man, I can't believe he got one. Oh, that looks fucking. Yeah. T1s and the flying HKs now start fucking shooting up the place because just as. The TX turned up and Kate turned up. The general had initiated Skynet. And Skynet has now taken control of fucking everything. Right. And is systematically killing absolutely everything in this facility. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you get the Terminators walking into the office, just blasting office workers everywhere. Yeah, yeah but everybody fucking dies. You don't really see it that much. You don't really see many people die at all. I mean, you just see them, like, fall out of frame. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stunt actors, like, oh. I mean, wouldn't there's no Robocop. There's no, 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 it's Kenny. not. No, no, no. It should have been a lot more blood. It should have been should messy have been as hell. Blood. But the thing is, it's like you don't see the outside of the facility. You see out a window yeah. briefly. And yeah. I'm like, what's going on out there? It's far more interesting than what the fuck we're watching in here. Well, then we started to find out that the Skynet is now killing everybody and everything around this facility. So nobody can try to turn it off. You know, and I... I suppose that was... Well, there is actually no off switch here either. No, so. no. I, I so that's mean. why with Kate Brewster's uh, dad's dying breath, he tells them to go to this uh, this facility where Skynet is being housed and you can shut it down there. Well, actually, through this dialogue, he actually doesn't say any of that. He actually says, he, he says to them, Crystal Peak, you've got to get the Crystal Peak, it's your only chance. And John says, is that where Skynet is being held? Yeah. And he doesn't actually say that. So it's all, you know, if it's the first time you're viewing, you think, like like I did, that this is where they're storing this big, massive supercomputer. And John believes that as well. Yeah. And then we get that shitty flying HK fly past that fires a missile into the room and kills nobody but the already half-dying man on the chair. Right. <laughs> 
Good job. Good job, machine there. Good job. <laughs> Arnie and the TX confront each other in the corridor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I prefer the fight. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, I prefer the fight in Terminator 2 oh, when the two of them first lock up that's a and surprise. throw each other through the walls. <laughs> So, you know, that, that's great. You kind of felt the weight of them. I, I, but when they get picked up and just thrown like like they're made of rubber, like they're made of CGI. Yeah, I <laughs> could not get over that. Like, like he picks her up. Like, I know he's super strong, but I also know that she's fucking super heavy. So, like, he must really exert some pressure, but he don't know. He just literally picks her up and slams her head into a toilet, and she's, like, not even phased by it. And then there's another sequence where she reaches her hand under his crotch, and he looks down like, oh, what? that's a bit weird, and she just starts ramming him through doors. And I suppose this is just the film's way of giving us another fight sequence like the one we got in Terminator 2 and showing us that, you know, Arnie is inferior to this model yeah it, it was it's an inferior fight sequence to the second one mm. it's it's more over the top and as a result mm. the visual effects are not up to snuff in order to deliver this kind of fight so that they just look like cgi models being thrown around the bathroom but it, but it's 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 all right i mean i i didn't mind it the, the fight sequences in t2 they're so short they're over so quickly like he bashes the t, t uh, the Terminator out of the window and walks away. Like, like doesn't even think to fucking finish him off. You know, or like when he got him in the factory and he, he fucking, he crushes his arm and leaves him and then he smashes him with that metal thing and sticks a pole for him and still leaves him. At least in this one, the TX actually has the intelligence to not only smash Arnie's head off, which, yeah, okay, nowadays looks really fucking shit. Yeah. You know, but hell, else, what else were they going to do? They couldn't practical effect that kind of visual. But then she infects the T-800, the T-850 with nanites. And so it's like, oh, awesome. She's going to actually use the, T the, the Terminator to try to kill John Connor. That's a, a cool little emotional twist, you know, because we're getting it. We are getting emotionally attached to this. I, well, I am. I'm getting emotionally attached to this Arnie character because nope. <laughs> I always get attached to the Arnie characters. You know, the Terminators he plays. Even, even the evil one in the first one. You know, I... I, I what? I, I, I you get emotionally attached to a serial killer? Because <laughs> it's it's the way... Because I like it. It's a cyborg. Yeah, it's a fucking sci-fi fucking killing machine. I like it. I'm sorry like for it. it. I fucking... I do feel sorry. I do feel sorry for it. You know, I love it when he's sat there and he's fixing his arm. And I'm like, oh, look at that damage he's got. You know, or when he's talking to her on the phone, he's like, I love you too, Sarah. And I'm like, hi, can voice memory. It's a whole emotional thing. Don't fucking judge me. But when he fucking... He gets his head cut off, snapped off, and then he has to kind of... I hate that. I hate that scene where he kind of has to attach it back on. Yeah. But he has that look in his eye, like, like he's about to go off and do something really nasty. And we follow Kate and John. Like, how the fuck does this work out? Like, like what the fuck is this fucking thing that they're running through to get to the airfield? Like a, a, a <laughs> giant electromagnetic tunnel. Yeah, it's a particle accelerator. Right. Okay. Okay. So, 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 yeah. You're just gonna turn this fucking thing on. Yeah. You know. And, it's magnetized. So yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> just. I mean, I. Yeah. It's another fucking piss take of the first and second one. Let's turn the machines on. Maybe it'll mess with its scanners. But this one's a magnet. So when the TX gets into there, you know, and she's using her flamethrower to try and burn them, um, it slaps her onto it and starts to pull all the metal off of her yeah, yeah and gives kate and john the chance to get to the plane arnie turns up at this point and is telling them to stay away you know i'm she's corrupted my system i cannot control my outer extremities so i you know you have to i'm gonna do the robot i'm gonna <laughs> get to you john and i'm gonna finish off what skynet has never been able to do in the fucking years that we've been trying to fucking kill you but this is where John kind of pulls out the whole you're about to fail your mission shit. And they'd had a conversation previously in the movie about if the Termin if, if John died and Kate died, then the Terminator would fail its mission and it would become obsolete. And obviously at this point, he's about to kill John Connor. So he's about to fail his mission, which means he will have no purpose. And the Terminator realizes this. And it, you know, it's, it's CPU is still intact. So it still has 
the 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 mission parameters of not harming John, but it's it can't control its body, so it's constantly trying to abort itself. So we'll just turn it off and turn it back on again. Yeah, because that works. It we does. Learned, yeah, we've learned in Terminator <laughs> Two. Of course it does. <laughs> Our two lovebirds get into the plane and they start flying uh, towards Crystal Peak. And I say lovebirds because come on, it's fucking obvious that these two are going to get together. The rest of the world is dying yeah she only just <laughs> lost her fiance earlier that day yeah but she was always going to be in love with john that's why she remembered the kiss there's no way she was about to get married and now within 24 hours she's like yeah i guess i'm going to be with you have your kids and fight the resistance in the future <laughs> she's got the emotions of a terminator if she, that's the yeah, way she's behaving she said at the movie she's uh, at the beginning of the movie to her father that she still couldn't believe that she was getting married she wasn't emotionally attached to scott she was upset and she didn't like the fact that he died but it was yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> they land at Crystal Peak and they start making their way into the into the huge bunker area. And like, it's fucking obvious that this place is not what we're hoping it is. The fucking place is dusty as fucking. There's a giant fucking blast door there. Nobody's here. So who the fuck's running this shit? But while they're trying to put in the code prompts, the TX turns up in a helicopter and smashes through the place. And then Arnie turns up an even a bigger fucking helicopter and smashes through the fucking place onto the TX. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's all right, you know. And the blast door starts to give way. After they've opened it, it starts to close really, really slowly. But Arnie, in which what is an all right special effect, I suppose, of the damage and the flesh and all that, runs, oh, yeah, yeah. runs up to the door. Because we'd never really seen that, had we? Most of the time, uh, uh, you, you know... In T1 and T2, and I will say this uh, in T3's defense, in T1 and T3, T2, it was all practical effects. You know, we were never going to be able to do that in 2004. We, just, we, we needed to, to, to bring it more up to date. So I, I, I like the damage wear on him, you know, and the fact you can see through things in the flesh. And, and when he runs for the door and jumps down and slams it, you're like, oh, fuck, he's, he's willing on sacrificing himself to save these two people yeah but the tx detaches her legs and is obviously still set on fucking killing them and as she moves her way up to the door screaming and crawling and i don't know why she doesn't turn her arms into fucking guns at this point and just blast the fuck out of them or grow rocket boots out of her legs i don't She's grabbed by Arnie as she tries to crawl through after kate and john and as they run to the elevator to escape he pulls out the power core <laughs> because obviously you know and shoves it in her fucking gob and says you're terminated you are terminated it's a good job the blast goes outside of the facility oh, yeah, and not yeah, yeah. back in through the open yeah. blast door that he's got there yeah <laughs> luckily they've got the next 30 years to dig their way out Right. In a post-apocalyptic No, they'll just future. radio others to come dig Oh, yeah, 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 or, or <laughs> dig underground. And there's probably another escape hatch. I mean, there was always going to be. But this, they, 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 they get down into this facility, and it's a facility for VIPs, the, mainly the President of the United States and his Joint Chiefs of Staffs and shit. And it's got its own um, garden, uh, greenhouse built up, and there looks to be, like, fresh water systems in the background and shit tons of food and films and... But the place is old, you know, the, nothing's been used in there for 30 years. And it's at this point that John realises... <laughs> Skynet ain't here. Skynet's not here. This is just a safety bunker because we needed to survive. It was inevitable. They were never going to die. Because if they die, Skynet can't exist. So he needs to survive. And John starts to explain to us that Skynet was never hardware. It was software. It was always in the system it was always the ghost in the machine i suppose ever since 84 when the terminator first came back you know even in 93 90, yeah 93 you know when they're fucking when they're there with dyson it was in the machine it just wasn't up to scratch yet maybe it was a little inclination but over time up until this point you know, Skynet, for, well, for me, I don't know how it works for everyone else, but Skynet has adapted and infiltrated everything and, you know, is systematically working its way around. 
You know, because back in 1984, we didn't, and fucking John Connor, fucking Carl Reese, sorry, didn't know there was going to be internet. No, fucking James Cameron didn't even know there was going to be fucking internet. You know, even in fucking Terminator 2, you know, there's no fucking internet there. Bringing it up to date with the newer technology, that was where the story was always going to have to adapt. You know, and it was going to rub people up the wrong way, but, you know, you have to make these things. And we watched the bombs drop you know, and and John explains to us that, you know, this isn't the end, it's only the beginning. And the movie just kind of ends. I really like that ending. It is kind <laughs> of dark. And the uh, moment they get into the bunker and realise that Skynet's not there and the two of them realise that there are people radioing in and mm. they're confused mm. and they don't know what's happening. Yeah. And the fact that he knows exactly what's happening. He knows exactly who's doing it he's got and to what's his, to come. He's got to his point like, in his life. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so yeah, you know, there isn't, you know, there is no fate but what we make. That's been done with and we're back to, it's your destiny and you're always destined to do this. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, if that's going to be the case and if you're going to on it to do it, doing it this way was really well handled. But yeah. the way that this ending mm. is filmed is is really quite effective watching yeah. the bombs drop yeah. watching her put her hand in his uh you know is to give him the kind of moral support to uh to actually get to work now yeah on rebuilding human society ready to face the robots which are being manufactured across the planet yeah but it's like what you said about there not being any music the the, the credits kind of just roll when it's quiet no, that, that's when soon the credits roll, they actually play the original music. Oh, really? Oh, well, I wasn't really listening to that point. Shit, no, you weren't. That was like the the one time in the film where it goes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> I was just like, oh, it's over. <laughs> and that's on set. going, why are you playing the music now? <laughs> Damn it! Because the people were going to walk out of the cinema are like, what the fuck did I just watch? Oh yeah, it was a Terminator movie. The <laughs> right? <playing>. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I have a, 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 a quite a few favourite sequences. I really like the sequence at the beginning where he drops the beer bottle into the uh, into the water. It was it's, it kind of reminded me of like the dream sequences that Carl had in in the first and second movie, I suppose. You know where like it 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 goes from present day to the future. You know, and we get our T eight hundreds and our our HKs flying around. That was that was kind of cool. Uh, I like the the crane sequence, chase sequence, you know, lots of explosions, Arnie going through a building, you know, fucking her blasting the fuck out of uh, the cars in front of her plasma cannon. Um, but every time I see that crane flip, I just immediately want to watch The Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my favourite sequences do, do orientate around the uh, graveyard sequence. Um, I like it when she shoots Arnie in the face. You know, and John's just sat there like, yeah, fucking do it. See what happens. And then Arnie's like, don't do that. And you're like, wow, you can add D's to like any word. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Arnie, like, the Terminators, the, like the, the, the Skynet sit there and go, well, okay, uh, right. We're going to put this chip in this machine. Make sure it's set to Austrian. Don't do that. <laughs> Well, I'd just be grateful he hasn't got Sergeant Candy's voice. Ah, oh, fuck. I was really wanting to see that deleted sequence, Bobber, where he's like, they're remodeling it on my face. CIS brings you the face of the future. Ooh, it's me. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Um, I like this psychological uh, breakdown between um, John and the Terminator. You know, it's like you forget that the Terminator is not just a killing machine, but it is designed to, you know, try to be human because it has to infiltrate. So it's got, you know, fucking files on anatomy and how to help itself survive. And, you know, it's got files on fucking, you know, psych psychological mentality of people and humans, stuff like that. And so the team of this, this sequence, I'm like, oh yeah, you could just fucking slap him. Be like, shut the fuck up, bitch. But he's like, no, I need you emotionally strong. You're like, all right. Uh, Dr. Silverman uh, turning up. <laughs> nice little nod. Mind you, the other two movies. And, and like I said, it, for me, it, it, it keeps it all coherently in one universe that one guy you know he's in the first one he's in the second one he's in the third one <laughs> Bam. it's all one big fucking thing and it you know we said it once we said it a fucking thousand times the first and second one are great but it's this guy that kind of 
for me, brings it back to those movies and goes, ah, oh, look, it's him. Uh, I like the punch to the chest. It's just gory. Right, yeah. And I like the cop's look on his face like, oh, my, what, the, what the fuck? And, you know, the other cop just gets whacked. And he's fucking dead. But this guy's still kind of alive <laughs> while the Terminator's driving him. Um, I, I, I also like the, the, the swap. You know, Terminator 1 and 2, yeah. The, the Everything is surrounding John Connor, you know. Um, and, it, yeah, it is massively important. But you had to, we had to try something new. So, hey, John's dead. And Kate programmed this Terminator. So she's the only one that can give it orders. So I like that whole little bit in the, in the RB. John keeps trying to question the Terminator and the Terminator won't answer him. But then Kate questions him and fucking Terminator just spills the beans. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's different. You know, I'm so happy this movie isn't just a complete, uh, you know, replicant of T2. It actually does try to do a few things on its own, which for me makes the film stand on its own two feet. Not strong. I'm not saying that. Hey, well, don't, don't fucking shout at me. I'm not saying it's strong enough to stand up against T1 to do, but it can stand on its own two feet. And that's it, really. I like the final action sequence, but it's just one big action sequence and, you know, lots of explosions. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I like the nuke at the beginning. Mm. Mm. So yeah, yeah, appreciate a good nuclear <laughs> blast. Yeah. You know the special effects are pretty good, and yeah, I like seeing the uh, army of T eight hundreds marching uh, marching along. Mm. It's very brief. Yeah, I like looking in the background, seeing what all the others are doing. You know, because there's a couple just firing off sporadic shots. You know, and one's yeah. fucking unloading a massive chain gun. And you get that last one that comes to the screen. Just is he trying to be doing angry face, evil face, or is he just looking at us? <laughs> he's looking right at you oh yeah, yeah he's looking right at me yeah he will give this a good review <laughs> yeah the crane action sequence I thought was pretty good um, I did like the line yeah drop dead you asshole yeah. and uh, he responds with I'm unable to comply yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the military facility fight where all the robots come to life start blasting everyone it's like that eh, was fine yeah, I like the sequence where uh, Kate kind of just goes, ah, oh, fuck this, and gets up with the machine gun and just yeah. blows away the flying one. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's kind of awkward, though, when John goes, you remind me of my mother. Yeah, I'm just, yeah I was just like, uh-oh. Just too <laughs> awkward. <laughs> but hey, well, you know, let's not even get into the whole Carl Reese being born not yet until going to be his father kind of grandfather thing. thing. Go cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and the uh, the bunker radio ending sequence mm -hmm. of thought you know the, i thought the film was mostly pretty weak right up until that ending moment which was like wow that was the ending of that film is so dark uh so i'd you know i'd part of me just wants to tear this film a new one and just be and just wash my hands with it because i love terminator one it's such a damn good film terminator two one of the best sequels ever made terminator three was like you're you're fucked like you, there's no, no, there is no chance for you Dope. to exist, but you do, <laughs> and you made a pretty competent action movie. Mm. That's all you did, you know. You had a bankable star with with Arnie. That's that's it, you know. <laughs> I, I give I, in the end, I give this film a pass. Yeah, you because know, it's a fairly decent action film with some you know pretty great visual effects. But as it is, this is just a watered-down imitation of Terminator 2. Mm. Repeating it in so many ways mm. that this feels more like a remake than a sequel. The other major issue I have with the film is just the comedy. And how tonally off this feels mm. as a Terminator film. The music in the film is also non-existent. And what is there is yep. utterly forgettable. There's some pretty strong performances some great set pieces and some very tight choreographed action pieces but in the end it just makes it just all okay just average you know this is it's not awful when you compare it to the rest of the series <laughs> yeah, i'm glad you went there <laughs> and as a result this film i would say is worth at least a watch but after that forget about it i agree with everything my friend says there barring um it being a bad movie you know i i didn't think the movie was going to be good when it first came out you all know my standings with trilogies the third one is never as good as the second and first one 
But this franchise isn't a trilogy anymore. It's not. It went into a fourth movie and a fifth movie and we are walking headfirst into a sixth movie. And I washed my fucking hands ages ago of this shit, but I still like them. I like Salvation. And I can watch Genesis, as stupid as that fucking movie is. And as much as I'm going to do to a, to wiki the shit out of it, I'm going to watch Dark Fate 2. But for me, Terminator 3 follows on from Terminator 2. Like Ari says, it's very watered down and it's very weak. But, you know, it's Terminator. We love this shit. It's the, I, know, I said it at the beginning with, this, with the fucking Alien franchise. You know, we all fucking sat there and we still do it now. We slate the fuck out of Alien 3. But Alien 3 is a hell of a lot fucking better than Covenant. And it's a hell of a lot fucking better than Prometheus. And it's certainly fucking better than Resurrection. Same thing with Terminator 3. Terminator 3 is not awful when you compare it to fucking Genesis and God knows what we're getting with Dark Fate. But hopefully Dark Fate comes out and Dark Fate fucking smashes the all of the other movies out of the way and goes fuck Terminator 2 this movie is the greatest movie in the fucking franchise I don't think so I really don't fucking think so but we never know there is no fate in what you make <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching off the shelf reviews Talk to the hand. <laughs>